So the divisibility rules. There are tricks to know if a number can be evenly divided. Any number can be divided by any other number. It's whether or not it can be evenly divided that we're investigating by another number without actually dividing. Uh, but then I had someone say, oh, evenly divided, does that mean it needs an even quotient? No, 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 no. It just means it's going to be a whole number answer when you, if you did the division. There would be no remainder, no fraction, or decimal in the quotient if you look down below with that arrow. So in my opinion, the easiest divisibility rules that most of you knew even before it was formalized was the two. All you have to do is look at the number. Those are supposed to be eyeballs looking at it. So all you have to do is look at the ones place. Look at the number on the end. And Connor, what do those numbers, what are the possibilities what those numbers could be? Zero, two, four, six, eight. Could be zero. Could be four. Oh, two, four, six, or eight. Who do we appreciate? Um, so if it's divisible by two, you don't need to show any work. You just look at the end number, number in the ones place. If it's a zero, a two, a four, a six, or an eight, then it is, in fact, divisible by two. A lot of people say, a number is divisible by two if it's even. Now, the problem with that is the definition of a number being even is that it's divisible by two. So you have to make sure you're aware that you have to look at it there. The five is another one that you just have to look at it. No, my eyeballs aren't matching up. Darn you, smart board. It looks, it looks, it looks more like olives. All right. When I look at a number and I'm deciding whether or not 5 is going to work out evenly if I divide it, what would that end in? Yes, ma'am? A 0 or a 5. And the other easy, you don't have to show any work, all you have to do is look at it, is the 10. Ah, eyeballs. Bad eyeballs. If I was a number, I'd pick 10 because I'm the easiest. Whoa, googly eyed. So you look at it, even if you're googly eyed like that, you still could easily determine if a number is divisible by 10. Oh, hey, Dios mio. Um, what would it end in? Spencer. Uh, zero and I have something else. A zero and you have something else. Go ahead. Um, and I said every, like there's two numbers between the ones that you have to look at and they're easier. Well, that's not exactly true because we don't have the visibility rules for seven and eight on our chart. Also, what uh, is there? Real, is there divisibility rules for seven and eight? And there is one for seven that, from what I've heard, is so complex you might as well just try dividing by seven. <laughs> There's one for eight that really is only helpful if it's a really big number. It's just that you only have to look at the last three digits of it because a thousand or any multiple of a thousand is already divisible by eight. So you only have to look at the last three digits. And then on my website, you'll see there's one for 12, there's one for 15. So there's a practice page that has some that we don't even have on our chart. Uh, but yeah, the seven one, I heard there is one, but it's really, really complicated. So it's not even worth it. Not very much of a shortcut. So I think I thought the other ones that are fairly quick and easy to check are three and nine. For three and nine, you're going to have to do a little adding, though. So on your homework and on your skill drills and such, if you're expected to show work or show how you know, you need to add the digits of the number. And sometimes it's a fairly large number, like in the examples at the bottom here. So 1,213,724. <gasps> so you'd have to add 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 3 plus 7 plus 2 plus 4. If you add up all the digits, and the number you get, you're not even sure if that's divisible by 3. Oh, so let me finish writing it in. <clears throat> a number is divisible by 3 if the sum of its digits, so you add up the digits and you show that work, is divisible by 3. So then in parentheses, basically, if you come up with a situation and it's such a large number with so many large digits, you come up with something like, I don't know, no, you add up the digits, you're not going to come up with something like that. Maybe you come up with something like 56, right? Come up with 56, for example, if it's so big and so many digits. Um, 56, you go, oh, is 56 a multiple of 3? It's not like it's a 3's fact that you should know. You should know up to hopefully 12. 
but 3 times 12 is 36, and I'm dealing with 56. So if you don't know 56 is a multiple of 3, add up the 5 plus 6, and you go 11. And hopefully you know 11 is not a multiple of 3, but if not, then the 1 plus the 1 is 2, and 2 is clearly not a multiple of 3. So you can keep adding digits. You find a sum, and then you go, oh, 56, I don't know, 5 plus 6. You can keep adding digits until the sum in the end would either be 3, 6, or 9, except for the number 0. The number 0 is divisible by everything, so that's the only caveat to that little trick. So if the sum of the digits is something that you could then add up those digits and so on to get 3, 6, or 9 eventually. Similarly, the 9's rule. You already showed the work of adding up the digits for the 3. You don't have to show that again if it's just a divisibility question. But let's say I'm just trying to think of whether or not I can divide 9 out of something for some other purpose. I'm going to add up my digits. And the number is divisible by 9 if the sum of its digits is divisible by 9. But again, if I came up with something like I added them all up and I got 74. I go, oh, 74. I'm not sure if 74 is a multiple of 9, although I should know that one. But I would do 7 plus 4 is 11, 1 plus 1 is 2. No, it would end up, if I kept adding digits, it would end up being a 9 eventually. And that is just not looking nice. Go ahead, try that one again. I hate this one. Okay, I'm so again, you could go ahead and go, oh, I don't want to think about my nine facts. I'm just going to add up those digits to see if that gets me somewhere that I know. Um, so again, 2, 5, and 10, typically the easiest. 3 and 9, fairly easy, but you do have to show a little bit of work. But once I've done those, then my next easiest is 3. 3 is just the combo. You check if it's divisible by 2. Check if it's divisible by 3. If it's divisible by both 2 and 3, then it's divisible by 6. Because <coughs> 2 is a factor and 3 was a factor, so therefore their product 6 was also a factor, which is similar to what you're going to find for like 15. 3 and 5 are factors, and 15 is if you try out that website at some point. Which just leaves us with the one that, in my opinion, is a little more complicated, the 4. So the thing about the 4 is you still need to know whether or not a two-digit number is divisible by 4. But if you see the example that's under there, it's got 1,213, no, 1,213,724. I don't have to try to divide 4 into that super huge seven-digit number. All you have to do is look at the last two digits, which in that particular number is 24. Oh yeah, 24 is a multiple of 4. Don't add them. There's no adding going on here. So you could take the last two digits and see whether or not you could split them in half twice. Because splitting something in half twice means you can divide it by 4. So a number is divisible by 4 if the number formed by its last two digits is divisible by 4. So sometimes I try that splitting in half twice. If it's like something like 92, I don't know off the top of my head, so I go, okay, 92 split in half is 46, which is even, so it can be split in half. Even. Um, but if it's something that you just know as a math fact that 4 is, it's a multiple of 4. So if it's like 28, you could just show on a scale drill or on this sheet or whatever, oh, I know that 4 times 7 is 28. You already know it's a multiple of 4. So go ahead and try the practice problems that actually... Let me give you a little guidance on how you can show your work for it. The practice problems that are down at the bottom. Scrolling, scrolling. The first one, 1,213,724. The work you would show would be adding up those digits. I might take it piece by piece. I might go, okay, this plus this is 10. And this plus this is 6. If my smart board was a little better, it wouldn't clobber over the next problem. 1 plus 2 plus 1, 2, 3, 4. So I got 4 plus 10 plus 6. That's 4 plus 6 is 10, plus the other 10 is 20. I've shown the work that's required to analyze the 3 and the 9. 
to analyze the four step, the work that you would show. And again, there's space in between. You could put it down here. You could show that 24 is 4 times 6. Or you could show 24 divided by 4 works out evenly to 6. Or you could show that splitting thing. 24 splits to 12, which is even. So I'm good. So go ahead and try these problems analyzing the divisibility of the seven numbers we have rules for.